Assalamu alaikum, I'm Zafar Bangash. Welcome to Crescent International Commentary on the Web. While the uprisings have been going on in the Middle East, uh, many people have asked as to why similar uprisings have not occurred in Pakistan. After all, the conditions in Pakistan are no better than any of the other Middle Eastern countries. There is massive corruption, the government virtually doesn't exist, it is subservient to the United States, there is massive pollution, people are oppressed, the prices are high, unemployment is high, there is all kinds of problems that Pakistan faces. And yet, we see that there is no stirrings of revolt in Pakistan. In fact, the US continues to insult Pakistan regularly. There are these drone attacks that have killed hundreds if not thousands of innocent people. There was also this episode of Raymond Davis who murdered in cold blood in the streets of Lahore on January 27 two people that were riding on a motorbike and he shot them five times each in the back. Now who was Raymond Davis and what what was he doing in that uh, old part of Lahore? The Americans claimed that Raymond Davis was a diplomat and that he was working for the US consulate in Lahore. Two days before this attack and the murder of innocent people in Lahore, the U.S. Embassy in Islamabad had issued a list of its diplomats in Pakistan. Raymond Davis's name was not on that list. Raymond Davis, of course, was a former uh, Special Forces operative and later on he was uh, recruited as a security consultant by the U.S. Consulate in Peshawar and the two years that he spent over there, he actually, uh, there were a number of terrorist incidents in Peshawar. When he moved to Lahore, again these terrorist incidents started to escalate in Lahore. And from the cell phone that was recovered from Raymond Davis's vehicle because the people arrested him and handed him over to the police, they found out a lot of uh, very strange objects in his vehicle. For instance, there was eavesdropping equipment, there were cameras with photographs of sensitive installations in Pakistan, all kinds of high caliber weapons, etc. Now, if Raymond Davis was a diplomat, why would he need this kind of equipment? Of course, this tit for tat was going on, this argument between Pakistan and the United States was going on as to whether Raymond Davis is a diplomat or not. He was going to be tried in a Pakistani court of law, and then the Saudis intervened. They took the families of the murdered men to Saudi Arabia for Umrah and there they struck a deal and offered them two million dollars each to the families of the victims in return for forgiving uh, Raymond Davis. Now under Islamic law, which is referred to as Sharia, the family of a victim can accept blood money. Now here is the rub. In the West, Sharia is denigrated and all kinds of abuse is heaped on Sharia, including in the United States. A number of states in the U.S. have passed laws banning the uh, implementation of Sharia among Muslims. Even here in Canada, there have been people howling against Sharia law and presenting it as some kind of a demonic law. And yet we find that in the case of Raymond Davis, Sharia law was used in order to secure his release. So instead of going through a trial and he would have actually faced the death penalty under Pakistani law, he was allowed to go scot-free and blood money was accepted or given to the, fam the, the victims' families so that Raymond Davis could go scot-free. So two points to keep in mind. Number one, when Sharia law benefits America or the West, it's okay. When it benefits the Muslims, it's not okay. Number two, America is so deeply involved in Pakistan that at every level there are American agents involved in terrorist acts. Even the so-called Pakistani Taliban are linked with the Americans. That's what has been discovered from the cell phone and the cell records of Raymond Davis. And so it should alert us to the fact that the mayhem that is going on in Pakistan 
all these terrorist acts have in fact something to do with American operatives in Pakistan. So America is no friend of the Pakistani people. In fact, it is using Pakistan in order to advance its own agenda. So we come back to the question, why don't the people of Pakistan rise up against this corruption that is going on? The bottom line is that regrettably, there is no leadership that can lead the people of Pakistan to stage such an uprising. Number two, the people of Pakistan are so deeply engrossed in their own daily troubles and problems like livelihood, finding means of livelihood, finding employment, etc., that they really have no time for thinking about overthrowing this corrupt system that exists in Pakistan. But unless and until the people of Pakistan pay attention to this aspect and they would have to make more sacrifices to do so, they will continue to suffer the degradations and the humiliations that has been their lot for more than 60 years. That's all for today. You've been watching Crescent International Commentary on the web. I'm Zafar Bangash. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.